Okay, Britta, are you ready? You gotta turn your mic on. Yes, yes, I am ready. <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, you are the uh, ideal person for today's event because we're at the Goethe Institute, the German Cultural Center, and you are in Germany. Yes, I am. Yes, so, I am. Please, please tell us a little bit about your work and the organizations you work with, and, and please tell us a story. Yes, yes, that's what I'm here for. Well, hello to Chennai. I've never been to India, so this is quite exciting to actually be broadcasted in India and to the Goethe Institute. That is very nice. Um, I'm here in Berlin at the minute, uh, close to Alexanderplatz. It's about, it's freezing a little bit, so it's quite cold here, actually. And um, yeah, I'm a storyteller now for about 10 years, and I work mainly for two organizations here, which is called Tell Us Without Borders, and at Zerkunst, and uh, we are working a lot in schools and also on small stages. Oh, sorry. That's me. And then Eric asked me to tell a story. And if a storyteller is being asked if he can tell a story, of course, she tells a story. <laughs> and I will not tell you the title of it. And maybe we can think of one afterwards. So let me begin. Once. When the earth was still a disk, and when one answer was still one, one answer to the un incomprehensible was death. Imagine an answer to the incomprehensible to be death. There was a monster, and this monster was called Kolu Modulu. And this monster reached from one side of the earth all the way to the other side. And when the sun shone, all these scales were glittering and shimmering in the sun. But let's not be too impressed by its beauty, because when it opens its mouth, it was so big that a whole carriage with two bulls could be swallowed by this monster. And its tongue, its thick black tongue, reached all the way up to the clouds and licked at those clouds. And when there were humans and animals around, he flung with his tongue all those alive into the air and swallowed them up in one swoop. And therefore all the villages were destroyed and everything alive was gone. Apart from one woman, she escaped, she rushed into the forest and because Kolomodulu had become so big and so enormous and so slow, he could not follow her into the forest. This woman, she was pregnant. And when she was due, and he, she held her son in her arms. And when she looked into his eyes, she knew that this was no ordinary boy. And she was right. Right from day one, he could speak. And she was very much impressed by what he could do. He knew how to do tools and weapons, and he protected his mother from the wild animals and also provided for food. This was a boy with no fears. One day, when he was roaming through the forest and the land around him, he came across one of these destroyed villages, and he had never seen anything like this before. And when he came home that day, he had many questions for his mother. And the mother said, yes, my dear boy, there's a monster called Kulumodulu, and he destroyed all our villages, and he swallowed up everything that was alive, and I was the only one who could escape. And when the boy heard this, he was ready to find this monster. Mother, I will go down and hunt down this monster, no matter what. And what do you think does a mother say when her only son wants to go on such an adventure? She tried with good arguments. She cried. She was angry. But no matter what she said, she could not stop this youth from this adventure. No word, no tear helped. So he took his sword and his arrow and bow and knife and went out. And he, now he calmed through the fields and the forest. He went through the pastures and the meadows. And one day he found on the ground a thick black something. And he knew that this must be the tongue of this monster. And with his knife, he cut 
the tongue of this monster. And just that second, the rest of the tongue rolled up and he followed now as fast as he could this tongue. And eventually he saw in the distance this huge, enormous, big monster roaring. He took now one of his arrows and he shot. And as quick as lightning, this arrow should shot and hit the monster in one of his eyes. Now you can imagine this monster was roaring and towering up into the air, but he was already ready with his second arrow and shot it and hit with his second arrow, the second eye. The monster was furious. And now with all his might, he was searching his surrounding for that person or for that anything that it was to kill it. But this boy, he was too quick and he was too fast and he avoided that monster. And when the time was right, he was there with his sword. And then he plunged his sword into the throat of that monster. He plunged it once and twice and it as often as it needed to kill that monster. And when it was lying dead on the ground and he was still trembling from the fight, he slowly climbed onto this dead monster and standing on this belly of this monster with his sword covered in blood. And he said, yes, I did it. But when he was standing there, he noticed that underneath his feet, there was some movement under one of his feet, yes, and under the other as well, and he couldn't make no sense of it. But then he understood that, of course, all the animals and all the people that this monster had had swallowed were still alive. So now he took out his knife and carefully, carefully cut open that belly. But there he heard the scream of a bull, so he let go. He tied to another place and cut a little carefully, carefully into that flesh. But this time he heard the howl of a dog. So he let go again and he tried another place, but this time he heard shouting, a human shouting, don't do that, you're wounding me, don't do that. The boy was standing on this monster at a loss. What shall he do? Shall he wound somebody in order to save him? Shall he wound somebody in order to save him? Yes, yes. Yes, I will wound you because I am here to save you. And now carefully, carefully, as carefully as he could, he cut open that belly from one side all the way to the other side. And then slowly, slowly, all the animals and all the humans were tumbling out of that belly. And when they came into the open, they couldn't open their eyes because the light was too bright. But when the eyes eventually got used to the light. They, they saw that they were freed <laughs> and they couldn't believe it. They were crying, they were screaming, they were laughing and they were hugging each other. Yes, because they were happy to have been freed. They went off to their villages now to rebuild those destroyed villages and the boy and the mother Yes, they joined them and they lived now with those people that he had saved. And when all those houses were rebuilt and everything seemed to be, yeah, good again, there was a meeting, an assembly. And one person on this assembly, he said, we need a king. Yes, we need a king. And I think the boy who saved us he shall be our king. Yes, he shall be our king. And there was a lot of cheers and applause. And yes, he shall be our king. But on the other side, there was another group. They were saying, what? Our king? Ha, he wounded us. Yes, he almost killed us. And what? where does he have his powers from? Maybe he will kill all of us. Maybe he is a sorcerer. He is a great danger to us. He is a great danger. We shall kill him. Yes, we shall kill him. And there was a lot of applause and a lot of shouting for this person. And now the audience, there were these two voices. The one voice saying, he shall be king. 
And the other voice saying, he shall be killed. And what do you think? Which words weighed heavier? And do you think there was maybe a third voice? Or should there have been a third voice? And if there wasn't a third voice, where was it? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. So what about that monster? What does that monster mean to you? What does it, what does it represent? Ha, ah, well, it's a, it's, a, it's a form of destruction that is happening amongst uh, society, I suppose. And, um, and I'm just very interested. I must say I've changed this story is from a, from a collection of a colleague here in Berlin. She is called Christine Wadetsky. She did a lot of research on storytelling and is a storyteller herself. Um, and she um, um, published a book called Kinder schaffen das. Um, children um, manage to, uh, to proceed. And um, um, I took this story from her book and i think it's just very interesting um this this polarization um the one the king do we need a king is the first question and uh, the second one is uh, yes it's always difficult to you know to take in what we can't understand and where are the ones um that might be in the middle or be the diplomatic ones and i see this very often here in germany anyway that we have this polarization going on we had it a lot during corona times and I think it's very important that the moderate people actually uh, raise their voice too. But can we raise our voice <laughs> and be still moderate? That's the big question. Yes. Hmm. So maybe you have an answer. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Some of our listeners here are, are studying German language at the Goethe Institute. Would you say a few words in, in German uh, about the yeah. master, about the story? Ja, 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 natürlich. Ja, herzlich äh, hallo nach Chennai. An, äh, ich weiß nicht, ob ihr Deutsch, ihr lernt wahrscheinlich Deutsch. Ähm, ähm, ihr könnt gerne mal schauen, äh, hier gibt es mehrere Webseiten auch über das Erzählen in Deutschland. Das wird Erzählen genannt, manchmal auch Storytelling, weil sich das besser anhört im, äh, als Erzählen. Und es gibt viele, es gibt eine sehr ähm, aktive, kleine, aber aktive Com äh, Community hier in, äh, in Deutschland, die sich mit dem Erzählen auseinandersetzt. Genau. Ja. <lacht> Thank you. Yes. Okay, uh, anybody here want to ask or tell anything? Please come up. Don't be shy. Yes. And please in German. You're welcome. <lacht> you know, Oprah Winfrey would go to you, but you have to come to us. Right. Can I see? Yeah, please. Uh, hi, uh, Sham here. So just, just one question. Uh, so boss, the question you just put it like, uh, what, what was the third voice? Is it a question to the audience or do we have an answer? No. No, you don't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it is a question to the, on, uh, to the audience. It's a little difficult to produce this online. But um, yeah, um, but it is a question to the uh, to the audience because I was wondering very often myself in the recent times in politics, where is this third voice? Why do we polarize so much? And uh, yes, it's a question I have. Right. So I have uh, maybe uh, it's my opinion. Uh, so okay. may I? Yes, please. Third voice might be might be from his mother because mother is mother. So he yes. doesn't want to be a king or doesn't want to be killed. Okay, so. Yes. Just yes. Her son, yes. Yes. You're right. Yes. You're right. I mean, mothers. Yes, they have a special power. <laughs> Thank you. So, Thank you. From me. Thank you so much.